What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you my workflow for editing a portrait in Lightroom. We post new videos and resources every week, so make sure you hit subscribe and follow us on social media using the links in the description. Also visit newlayer.com and sign up for the email list for special offers that are only available for email subscribers. Let's get started. Here's the before image and here's the after, and I'm gonna take you through my workflow and the order that I did things to process this portrait. New Layer members can download this raw photo in the project files at newlayer.com, but you can apply the things that you learn in this video to any image of your own. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the before image and hide these thumbnails. And in the basic panel, you'll see that I already brought the exposure down. If I reset that to zero, you'll see that this image was really overexposed, but luckily not to the point where any of the highlights were being clipped off, so we can still pretty easily work with it in Lightroom. So I'll take the exposure down until I'm happy with roughly how bright it is. And that's about negative one and a half. And I want this image to be a lot warmer, so I'm gonna come up to the temperature and increase that. And around 8700 is good. Next, I'm gonna bring the highlights down just a little bit, maybe negative 10, and increase the shadows to about 30. Now, the reason I bring the highlights down and the shadows up is to bring back some of the details in the darkest and lightest parts of the image, and that gives us more dynamic range to work with as we go on. Some images need more and some need less, so you'll have to look at your own pictures and decide. Now I'm gonna add a little more contrast back into the image, so I'm gonna increase the whites just a little bit to about plus 20, and decrease the blacks a little bit just to about negative 10. So one super quick tip to smooth skin and kind of add a dreamy effect to your photos is to decrease the texture slider and then increase the clarity. So I'm gonna take the texture down to about negative 19 or so, and then I'm gonna increase the clarity. And I'll take that up to about 40. So by first decreasing the texture and then increasing the clarity, you can add some local contrast without making the image look gritty or grungy. I'm also going to increase the dehaze just a tiny bit, and that'll give us a nice contrast boost. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of saturation out of this image, so I'll set that to negative 5. And that's just because this portrait was taken in the forest, and I want it to have a more natural look without super bright colors. Next, I'll go into the Tone Curve panel, and I'm going to give this a slight S-curve. So I'm going to click here and here, so when we edit the top right point and the bottom left point of our curve, It'll only edit the shadows and the highlights and leave the midtones alone. So I'm going to bring that bottom left point up a bit and the top right point down. And that'll make the blacks a little lighter and the whites a little darker. And that gives our image a little smoother and slightly faded look. Next, I'll go into the effects panel and I'm going to add a little bit of a vignette to bring more focus to the subject. So I'm going to take the vignette to about negative 30 and I want it reaching in from the outside of our image a little bit more, so I'm gonna take the midpoint down to about 40. Next, I'll go into the calibration panel, and most people don't use this panel, but you can use it to create some subtle color shifts that give your image a really cool look. So if I go down to the blue primary, what this will do is we'll shift the blue channel towards cyan or towards purple. So if I take it all the way to the right, you can see some of the things in the image that were blue, like her sweater, are now really purple, and if I take it all the way to the left, instead of being blue, they're a lot more cyan. It also changes the color of the skin and some of the other things in the image, because they have blue in them, just not as much. So I like this effect, but obviously it's way too strong, so I'm going to bring that down to about negative 25. If I go up to the red primary slider and take it all the way to the left, you can see our image becomes more magenta, and if I take it all the way to the right, the image becomes more orange or yellow. And again, I like this look, but it's way too strong, so I'm gonna take it to about 25. So these changes kind of offset each other, but shift the overall tones in the image. Now one trick that you can do, especially when there's skin tones, is increase the green primary hue slider about halfway that you did for the other two. So I'll take that to about plus 12 or plus 15. And what that does is it'll usually bring more natural orange colors back into the skin. Next, I'm gonna go into the split toning panel. And first, I'll increase the saturation of the highlights to 100. That way we can see the color that we're working with. And I'm gonna increase the hue to get a nice orange, orangish green color. So around 60 is good. And then I'll decrease that saturation so the effect isn't so strong. So I'm gonna make it really subtle. I'll take that all the way down to 10. 
And then I'll do the same with the shadow. So I'll increase the saturation to 100 and then shift the hue all the way to the 200 to 230 range because that's where all the blues and teals are. So around 220 looks good. And then again, I'll bring the saturation down. Somewhere around 35 is good. Now if I come up to this balance slider and move it all the way to the left, that will tell Lightroom that I want it to interpret more of my image as shadow, so it will add blue to more of it. And if I take the balance all the way to the right, Lightroom will interpret more of this image as highlights and add that orange-yellow color. I want a little bit of both, but the contrast between her face and the background is pretty strong, so I'll slide the balance slider until I'm happy. So somewhere around 85 is pretty good. You get a nice orange glow on her face and a subtle blue cast on the rest of the image. Lastly, I'm gonna show you one little trick that I use to brighten up people's eyes in portraits. So I'm gonna to click to zoom in and come over to my brush tool. And I'm just gonna paint with a nice small soft brush only on the eyes. And the only change I'll make is with the exposure. Usually I like to keep this under about 0.5. If you go too high, it starts looking a little fake. So I'm gonna take that to about, I don't know, 0.4 or so. And then I'll close out of the adjustment brush and zoom back out. So again, here's the before and the after. Thanks for watching guys, that's it for now. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to get notified of the next video. Also leave a comment and let me know what you wanna learn next. We create new content based on your feedback, so it's really helpful. I'm JT Shaver for New Layer, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.